Hi, hi, it's me, Dora V here, and today I'm doing something a little different. This is known as the chakras. <laughs> so it's crown, brow, throat, heart, solar plexus, sac sacral, what? Uh, okay. And base, so how good is berserk for these things? Let's ask the tarot, shall we? Well, so, for the consciousness... It's the Eight of Swords reversed. So when you look at it this way, like with this jerk here, with dead to me here, um, all the swords fall, and then he just falls, and hopefully he falls. So, But I don't know if the reversal, well, let's find out about the reversal. I know that the upright Eight of Swords is trash. It basically means you're kind of trapped, and to get out is painful, but to stay in is just as bad, but you gotta break free. You got to break free. But the reversed is it's difficult, opposition, treachery, fatality, Jesus Christ. So the reversed is really just as bad because it means that, I mean, in the traditional tarot, it's someone that's trapped in swords. So when it's reversed, I mean, she's falling over. The swords would fall right on top of her. And she would die because of it. That sucks. Like, you ain't getting out. So, for the consciousness, it's one of those stories that has a tendency of sticking with you. And I think that's very true. Because there are people... Like when Berserk was first came out in the 80s. And I suspect that there are a lot of people who read it to this day. Like, they haven't stopped. I think once you get in to berserk it never goes away and I think that even if you stop reading it it does not go away I've been involved in a fandom since 2014 and it's still very prominent to me now and it's been like five years I guess it helps that I still have to really catch up with the manga but I can't stress this enough I'm in no hurry it's still being updated so I can take all the time in the world of course, that does leave some holes, but I do feel like this makes a lot of sense that that uh, is what is unforeseen because it hasn't been updated. But yeah, difficulty because it hasn't been updated. But it's also just really, really dark. And that could definitely be bad for some people's minds. <laughs> I'm just fine, but if you're somebody who's so easily triggered with certain things, then it's probably in your interest to read very carefully. So anyway, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Eight of Swords reversed for your consciousness. <laughs> nice. Your brow is intuition. Now, this is a good one. This is the Nine of Cups. See, it's a good one. Satisfied emotional fulfillment and happiness. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, for your intuition. Because I think one of the best things about Berserk is there's a lot of theories and interpretations. And and despite the divisiveness of the fandom, I do feel like there definitely is, like, contentment. Victory, success, advantage, satisfaction. That it's still very satisfying despite the faults that it has. Like, despite the fandom's problems that... That there's still a sense of just contentment and I don't know about victory but I do feel like it's still a very successful series and that it's still very satisfying. That's why people are hanging on to the updates because it's still just a damn good uh, story or the art is pretty good at least. Let's see the throat. This is the communication this is the sun. Well, yeah, apparently it is really good for communication because the fandom is still talking. Skull Knight Forum is still active. Reddit one is active. People are still talking about the series. I'm, I have a blog, like Griffith's Huggy Box. Tumblr is still active with berserk stuff. So truth, joy, happiness, success, growth, and prosperity. And there are new people getting into berserk every day. Even communities that are a bit inactive, supposedly, still has activity. The Tumblr blogs still get likes. They still get comments. 
So yeah, it's I feel like yeah, there is a lot of growth and prosperity despite the divisiveness of the of the fandom. So yeah, it makes a lot of sense right here. Yep. Beginning of well, I don't know about innocence, but I do feel like it's definitely just very bright. The fandom for all its problems still shines pretty brightly. It's a lot of communication going on. Even Miura has, like, interviews. So, yeah. And that definitely works. The heart. Compassion. Okay, maybe with this case, not so much. Strength reversed is pretty awful. Makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of, like, a sense that the fandom is kind of out of control. I feel like the Skull Knight has a tendency of alienating people. I know that. There's an admin there that makes it very difficult for people to say much of anything. So that causes a lot of alienation. And it's, I mean, most people there are okay, but there is still a sense that if you have any um, interpretation that deviates from the norm, that can get you in a lot of trouble. And even on Reddit, it's in, in Tumblr, like it can get pretty nasty like, I know that much, and that's why the, the fandom is so divisive and, and, to me, kind of out of control in a lot of ways. Like, they attack Griffith apologists that don't even exist the way you think they exist. And I remember, like, a lovely Burn had a rant about the fandom, and she admitted that she would rather talk to people on a skull night before going to places like Reddit. Just the hatred can be unreal. And I don't blame people for being angry at Griffith. I mean, it's definitely justified, but sometimes it just it's taken to ridiculous levels. I mean, Jesus. But I, I've never seen anybody ever justify like what I mean what Griffith did after the eclipse or rather during it. I and mean, no one's done this. Like, I've never seen any such thing. But yeah, the fandom is very broken. It's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's still like a very bright fandom, but it's a broken one in a lot of ways and very much out of control. And yeah, compassion. Yeah, I would say that, well, I mean, with the exception of like shooting the breeze and secret schnoz, yeah, Skull Knight definitely is lacking for it. Indeed, like it's you can't say a damn thing over there without being attacked in some way or feeling attacked. And Reddit is a little different in that regard. So yeah, they are sorely lacking in compassion. With some exceptions, but the norm is it just ain't there. At least that's how I see it. But yeah, it's, uh, I don't mind the Skull Knight all that much. But it's definitely deeply flawed. At least that, you know, that's... But, I mean, if you're comfortable posting there, do so. I mean, I do post there every once in a while. And and most of my posts are pretty well received if they're not removed by meanie admins. But I don't blame people for not wanting to at all. And that goes for the Reddit forum as well. But the gift exchanges are still pretty fun. And shooting the breeze is okay, too. But, yeah, the... Strength of verse definitely fits her compassion, <laughs> for sure. Solar plexus, willpower. This is the six of wands, which is a good one. Yeah, it's definitely, the fandom is very enduring, I guess, like that works. It is most triumphant, yeah, great news. Like, they are waiting for great news. They can wait forever. And kind of hope, a very hopeful fandom. Well, with the exception of people running their mouths about Idol Master and getting super cynical about everything, I think for the most part there's a lot of faith in Miura, a lot of faith in the comic, the manga itself, a lot of just faith in general and a feeling that, yeah, there will be triumph. But definitely in terms of willpower, yeah, the fandom definitely is built to last. <laughs> I mean, for sure, like, it's definitely very, uh, very solid, I guess could be the term that I'm looking for. And now for the Sacral, creativity, not the Four Cups, which is good. <laughs> yeah, it's usually pretty good, it's, uh, 
Yeah, it's kind of, well, actually it's kind of like, a, kind of like the Four of Pentacles, that it has some good points, but it also has bad points, kind of both, so like, so this one is, uh, that sucks, <laughs> shit, I thought this was a good card, but, but yeah, it, it's kind of like an iffy, like it does represent stability, but it can also represent, well, it says here, apathy, boredom, dissatisfaction, that's the creativity. So, like, on one hand, there's a patience and endurance, but on the other is stagnation and rigidity. I do think that last part's definitely true. I don't know about stagnation, but I know that the fandom can be very rigid in a lot of ways. And then tied down, unable to express one's feelings, or the boredom with what one has emotionally. Yeah, I do feel like a lot of people in the fandom are kind of afraid of really saying anything. Uh, when it comes to fanfic, it's not very commonly written because I know that can get really nasty about certain things or certain pairings. And so, like, I feel like in the creative area, yeah, I imagine there is some stagnation going on. And while it's a very enduring creative fandom, it's kind of stagnated, I guess, in a lot of ways. Like, I wouldn't dare post any creative works on a skull night, no way. But yeah, I thought this was a good card though. But then again, I have her looking like this. Like she's got like yum yum food, but her face is very, mm, yeah, so like she's indifferent. And so weariness, disgust, aversion, imaginary vexations, like maybe they're just getting mad at nothing. Is an, is no consolation. Blended pleasure, yeah, very ambivalent. So I guess that's only really good if it's reversed, but it's bad when it's... Uh, well, I mean, it's ambivalent is what, what I should really say. Yeah, weariness, disgust, aversion. Aversion. <laughs> aversion. Yeah, that's how the creativity is. Well, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, because the people who are the most tend to be the ones that the fandom at large is not fond of. So that's part of the divisiveness, and, and it does make people kind of afraid to post in certain areas, and you know, it certainly makes a lot of sense. Uh, as for boredom, I don't know about that. Yeah, I guess the creativity's a bit so six on one hand, half a dozen on the other. And finally, we've got base, Life Foundations. This is the King of Swords. <laughs> uh, those of you who played Love Nikki will know exactly who this is. If you don't, I will not tell you, but he pretty much fits the King of Swords because the Swords deck is usually dreaded, and he is... <laughs> Yeah, his name is not Nadog, just as, but she, uh, she has a, that, he represents base life foundations, and so it's command, authority, military intelligence, yeah, he's perfect, and military intelligence, law, offices, and so forth, thankfully it isn't reversed, because reversed is definitely awful, but whatever rises out of the idea of judgment, really, that's the life foundations. Damn. Well, <laughs> jeez, Berserk, it's uh, certainly a very uh, powerful series, to be sure. Let's see. It could be a description of his personality. What, Berserk has a personality? Yeah, right. Brave, courageous, intelligent. Yeah, it could be. But, uh... But yeah, but, the, but we're talking about, like, Berserk, like, just the series at large. So for the base, I guess that's not too, too bad. I guess you learn what not to do and what not to be and to try to avoid certain things. It definitely has intellectual challenges. I do feel like the philosophy might be a little shallow, but it definitely challenges in a lot of ways. And Guts is both aggressive and defensive and... So it definitely fits. You know, some people describe Griffith as cold and domineering. I don't know. I know Guts is definitely argumentative. Griffith is ambitious. A lot of people are assertive. Griffith is authoritative. 
but yeah, I do feel like yeah, it's not a it's not too bad card for life foundations, I guess. So looks like overall, I think Berserk itself is good for your chakras. The art's really nice. The story is pretty, especially the Golden Age. I love the Golden Age. I think that's the best arc. Everything else, I honestly I don't know anything about Lost Children. That I'm in the dark on that one. But the Conviction art, blah. I could I don't really give a shit. Like like Luca, I'm, she's great and all, but I don't care about her much, and I don't I don't really care about anybody there. But then once Griffith came back into the picture, I'm more interested. So you see, it kind of hinges on Griffith. <laughs> Bad me. But I feel like a large part of the relationship is Guts and... Of the relationship, Jesus. Like, Berserk is Guts and Griffith. And you really can't have one without the other, to be honest with you. But still, yeah, I think it's good for your spirit or your chakras. It's definitely worth reading Unless you're somebody who, like I said earlier, if you're somebody who really gets triggered with violence or or rape or sort of certain bad things, then then yeah, it might not be for you unless you just read very carefully. But I'd say for the most part, you should at least check it out. At least try to. It's not too difficult to get. It's definitely very challenging, good stuff, full of characters who command your attention. Just, just, um, then the art's amazing, for the most part, not always, but, but just amazing work. So, so, uh, strengthen your chakras with Berserk, uh, you really should, good stuff. And that's pretty much all I can say, otherwise I'd just be repeating myself. So, see you later, goodbye.